What we are going to do next is that uh, we are going to look at some code and implement a part of our demonstration application. Um, as a reminder, this is this uh, this here is the URL that you can use uh, for accessing the demo app source code, and uh, it's available in a JIT repository. So you can just clone it, or you can download it uh, as a source code package. And uh, what you need for that application is Qt 474 version. I think what we are going to cover next is a simple application that uses rotation sensors to implement uh, a game board where there is a scrolling ball that you can control by tilting the device. It's a simple and uh, visual demonstration. So, I'll, I did a little bit of setup, setup here. Um, before the break, we saw how to create a Q, uh, Qt Quick application for Symbian using Qt Creator, um, more specifically the wizard in Qt Creator. And uh, we're going to go on from there and start building a simple application on top of that basic template. Uh, I have renamed it Live Demo and uh, First, I'd like to cover a couple of changes, a couple of little details that are quite important in this case. First, um, first, uh, there are ch some changes in the project file for this demo. Uh, first of all, as we discussed during the training, there are a number of capabilities on Symbian platform that we want to enable so that we can access them from our device, uh, from, from our, our application. Uh, in this case, as you might remember, the network services was enabled by the wizard itself when we were creating the project. So that's something that we already have. But then I also added local services and location. Uh, Strictly speaking, we don't need location for this uh, particular piece of the demo application that we are going to implement here, but it's good to know in general sense that you will need to add this by yourselves. Uh, and the location is needed for the actual complete demo application. Uh, another thing is that we need, we need to add cute quick components configuration and mobility to make sure that we are able to use those um, uh, modules in, in this case, those components. And we also want to specify which um, mobility, cute mobility modules we want to use. In this case, uh, connectivity and location are enabled. Uh, once again, these are something that are needed for the complete demo application. I just want to cover them in this uh, instance as well. Otherwise, this project, project file, file is uh, the same that the wizard created for us. Okay, so when we created this uh, project, we got the basic main .cpp file. I have not made any modifications for that, but uh, in the demo application there will be some modifications and we can cover those a bit later. Then we have the basic main.qml. Uh, this provides the status bar, page stack, toolbar once again. And uh, for this example we are not going to modify that. It gives us the basic window management that we want, and uh, we are happy with it. So let's go directly to the main page. 
This is our starting point. Uh, right now, what we have is a plain Hello World example page. So let's start um, building on that. First of all, where is my mouse? First of all, uh, we have the Qt Quick um, imported already, so we don't need to worry about that anymore. We also have Symbian components imported, so that's good. We want to use them. Uh, additionally, let's import uh, some Qt Mobility APIs. or we'll import sensors and feedback. Well, actually, let, let's just leave the feedback away at this point. Uh, we'll add it later when we enhance the example. Right now, I want to keep this very simple. <coughs> so, sensors is for accessing the rotation sensor that we want to use to detect the uh, orientation of the device. So, how do we access, uh, access that sensor? Uh, what we do is that we instantiate an element known as a um, rotation sensor. And uh, cute. Um, Qt Creator has this nice inline help that we can use. By pressing F1, I'm able to access the help page for that sensor. What you can see here is that, um, well, this doesn't provide a lot of information, but it tells us that it's based on Q rotation sensor. And as we learned earlier, is that um, the signals from Qt objects are available in QML. So we can assume that signals from the Q rotation sensor will also be something that will be uh, translated into QML. But oh. and uh, There is a reading property in uh, Q sensor. I'm having a little bit uh, small problems when I'm trying to see uh, the small screen, but uh, I'll try to cope with it. Um, the reading property uh, is the property that provides us with the reading from that particular sensor, in this case, orientation. Uh, and or rotation. And uh, when the property is changing, we can we are, we are notified about that uh, by the notify signal for that property, which is on uh, which is reading changed. And we can uh, receive that signal in the on reading changed uh, signal handler. So let's implement that on reading changed. Like that. And uh, then, well, we know that there's reading uh, um, property that we are receiving, so, uh, and uh, that is available for us for accessing the uh, state of that sensor. So let's just print out those values at this point. When we run this application, 
I'm going to just show you what happens on the uh, Qt creator side because the application itself doesn't have much uh, interesting content at the moment. Oh, I wonder if it's already active. And this is not what I wanted. Just to be sure, I'll force the sensor to be active. I don't remember what the default value is. So, right now, I'm building the application for Symbian device. And it uh, might take a little bit of time, but when it eventually happens, then I should be able to... Um, okay, this is a notification that uh, the SDK has to do some modifications on the package because uh, it's not properly signed. So, when I tilt the phone here, you can see on the debug clock that readings are changing. So that means that our application is working. I'll just kill it. Okay, the next part. Uh, we probably want to add some actual content in our application. Um, I just need to at something uh, simple here. So, let's add a game board. Um, let's say we start with a rectangle. And uh, just fill the parent with that socket so that we can use the whole uh, screen. And uh, let's color it black. <coughs> so, another thing that we might want is something to move with our orientation sensor. So, let's just add a simple uh, item for our ball in the game. And this is where we start faking things. We'll just use a rectangle and uh, I'll change the main items or the root items ID to root so it's easier to access the main page. And uh, then I'll add a couple of properties. Well, at this point, one. And let's go with, let's say, 20. So, what we have here is a simple rectangle and we want this this rectangle to be turned into a ball well I'll just bring in some code from the demo application so I don't have to write all the gradients and things like that So, 
We have a game board, which is black. We have a ball that's um, faking its appearance using a rectangle and defining its radius so that um, the corners of the rectangle are rounded to make it appear as a ball or a circle. And then we use the uh, gradient to make it a little bit like a ball shaded thing. So we are faking things, but this is okay for a demonstration. If in actual application you might want to use something like a, an image or something like that. Um, okay. So what then? How do we make that little ball react to readings from our sensors? We have the handler for rotation sensor here. And uh, this is another thing where we make some small shortcuts. Um, just make some way for our implementation. Um, so let's first make things a little bit more clear by renaming some things. So we'll implement um, at a variable, local variable into this block of code called reading x. And we take the value for that from the reading properties y value. Why is this? Because when we are tilting uh, along, tilting um, so that we are tilting on the y axle, then we want the ball to move in the, the direction where we are tilting, not in the direction of the axle itself. So um, that's why we are basically swapping these namings. Okay. Then, um, to make our ball move, let's react to these changes. Now, as we saw, we are actually getting some details um, from the sensors about what the actual orientation is. But to keep things simple, uh, we are actually just going to react on the direction of the tilt. So when you tilt on the right, then the ball goes that way. When you tilt on the left, the ball goes that way. And uh, to do this, let's just... Well, Let's just paste the code there. So in this case, what we have is we are checking the reading. If it's less than zero, then we'll move our ball to zero. We move the position of the ball to zero. If it's over zero, then we'll move the position of the ball to uh, max x. Uh, it's a property that we don't have yet, but we'll need to add it. Uh, and the same for the y position. So based on the direction of the tilt, we are just moving our ball to one or the other edge of the screen. That's <coughs> quite simple. And these are the properties that I mentioned, max x and max y. They are used for calculating the, the uh, other edge where we want to move our ball because uh, we don't want it to go outside the screen. Okay, so let's see if this builds. I pressed Ctrl B to make it build. And let's try it out on the device. Uh, can I have video on uh, input two? The application is launching, 
And what we have here is a single shaded ball that's jumping from edge to edge. Well, this is not really what we wanted. We wanted something that rolls nicely on the screen. So for the purposes of this demonstration, let's just fake that as well. Um, can I have Rudy on the laptop, please? Now, we discussed animations earlier today. So it just happens to be that we can use this, that um, mechanism to fake some of the things that we want to happen on the screen. And uh, what can we do? We can define animations on the properties of the ball, because we know that it's going to change from zero to max something. Let's target Y first. So adding behavior means that we are adding an animation. <coughs> Number animation in this case. Uh, I'll put it to 1500 milliseconds so we can easily see what's going to happen. And then I'm going to uh, launch the application. Uh, can I have video on input two, please? Shortly, it should be okay. Now it's launching. So now it's moving more smoothly as I'm tilting the device. And every now and then it's jumping for the, to the other side of the screen, but that's intentional because we don't have uh, animation in that area yet. So this is to, uh, can I have video on laptop, please? Uh, this is to demonstrate the power of simple animation framework in Qt Quick. Let's add an animation on X. Make it a little bit slower. Let's add some easing on the animation. and then I'll just deploy it to the device. Uh, video on device, please. I probably should have waited to see that it actually goes goes, completes fully and starts deploying. Uh, back to laptop, please. It seems that I might have made some mistake in here. Oh, <coughs> that's funny. Let's just retry. Okay, to device, please. So what we have here, oh, okay, we are, we still don't have the proper 
easings. But now it's moving much more fluently on the screen. Uh, and that's, of course, completely fake. Uh, back to your laptop, please. Oh, yeah, I think I forgot the type of the easing. That should work better. Uh, video on the device, please. So what we have now is a little bit more bouncy movement <laughs> for that ball. Oh, it went. Oh, this is okay. So, um, back to the laptop, please. So that's the essentials of one of the views in the demo application. But um, let's go and see some other parts as well. So I'm going to guide you through some of the um, details in the demo application. Uh, we don't have time to actually implement the other parts, but uh, let's see what we have in there. Well, actually, um, um, Uh, video on the device, please. Oh, no, I accidentally exited the application, but uh, just restarted. Uh, so, this is the demo application that we have available for you on the uh, repository on the internet. It consists of a number of uh, different pages that are designed to um, provide you with a simple example of using different features in uh, more or less sane context. Uh, there's an example of using Maps API, the location API. Um, it might not quite work in this case because I, don't, I have no connectivity and uh, yeah. So, not much to see. It tries to retrieve data from the internet and uh, doesn't do much. Then we have some NFC demonstrations. Uh, they don't do much in this device because this N8 doesn't have NFC capability. But if you have a device like C7, for example, then you will be able to see how you can uh, read and write NFC tags and uh, there's also this peer-to-peer -peer NFC demonstration where you can easily uh, send messages from one phone to, to another. What you need to do is to have two NFC-capable phones and you just bring them close to each other so that their chips are able to communicate and then you can chat with the devices. Uh, it might not have many real-world uh, uses, but uh, it's an interesting example. And then, of course, we have the game that we saw earlier. Oh. 
Once again, I exited by accident. Uh, one view in this demonstration is the gallery view, and this is um, this is one of the usual examples of um, UIs implemented using uh, QML and path view. So in this example, what you see is a um, well, it um, it shows you how to browse pictures in your uh, picture library in the in the mobile phone. These images come from the document library using document um, library API, and they are retrieved from the uh, pictures that you have on the phone. So be careful when you demonstrate it if you have any pictures that you don't want to share with other, other people. And um, I think it actually looks nicer like this. So this is using the path view to set the pictures on a path that makes them move in a circular fashion. It's also modifying the Z order of the picture so that they come in front of each other when it's appropriate. So we have um, a bit less than 10 minutes left. Is there any particular example that you would like to briefly check? Uh, go ahead. Could you show how the menu is set up? Um, this menu. Ah, yeah, sure, sure. Okay. Yeah, that's actually a good, good one. Yeah. Uh, can we switch to laptop, please? Okay. So. First of all, we have the usual main view. It contains the page stack that uh, is used for stacking the pages as discussed previously. And uh, initially, um, the main page is pushed into the stack. In the main page, we will see how the other pages are added in there. So what we have is, in this case, is a list model And um, let me find the delegates. So this is the list view. Uh, the list model itself contains uh, the names of the files where our UI components are. For example, the game was page five. So we give it a title, subtitle, and the name of the QML file. So we are able to load these files dynamically. Then we go to the actual list view. And with list views, it's the delegate that does the hard work of uh, um, showing each item and uh, also reacting to events on those items. So in this case, what we have is a delegate based on item. Goes all the way down here. There is some um, implementation for showing the text, such as uh, the title and the subtitle that were in the model. And in the mouse area that we have set up for this um, delegate, um, in that mouse area we are receiving the mouse um, event when user taps on that item. And what we do is that we, we just call this function open file using the page from the model. So this page. Uh, for the game, the page is page 5. So let's go to the function. Uh, in this case, um, the function is quite simple. What it does is that it uses that file to create a component. And then it simply pushes that component in the page stack. 
which instantiates it and adds it as a page to the top of the stack, bringing it also visible. And that's it. So what we have here is a list model. We select a page and then we, we dynamically load that page and bring it into view. This also means that we don't have to load the whole UI the first time we open the application. Just the main page, our list view, our model, and then we, we, when we access the uh, separate sub-pages, we are also loading their uh, QML code at that time. Now, that might not be the optimal solution because it also means that uh, there might be some delays when switching between views. So it might be a good idea to implement some kind of uh, mechanism to um, reduce those delays. For example, when you go to the gallery application, you can see that it is pretty slow for a little while when it loads all the images into the view. But then it works fast after that. And there are a number of mechanisms that you can use uh, to speed up, for example, loading images. You can um, implement, um, implement image providers yourself or things like that. Okay, any other questions? If not, then um, I'll show no this page still. So if you haven't um, taken the URL for that uh, demo application repository yet, then I'll write it down. It will also be available um, on the video, obviously. And uh, I don't know if the, yeah. Well, yeah, it's the video and the screen here that give you that information. You can, um, of course, contact me. I will be walking around in here for the next couple of days, probably. And uh, if you want to, I can provide that uh, demo application for you in uh, email or something like that as well. Okay. Uh, thank you for attending this training session and uh, from here um, I was asked about the location for the demo application. It's available in that address and the repository is now public. So in developer Nokia.com you can find a DD11 Qt with Nokia project that provides you the um, demo application. Now bear in mind that the application is uh, intended to be simple implementation. Uh, it's an, an application with a number of different views as pages and uh, different functionality is demonstrated on different pages. There's things like uh, how to use NFC in phones that support it, uh, how to access document gallery, how to access sensors, APIs, things like that. Oh, and uh, audio element as well. 